We continue the, the seva of our reading of Bhagavad Gita at the request of Gurudev as a service to all of you, all Vaishnavas. But of course, as we've learned as we go along, not a service in the Western sense of the word, a service, but rather a service to the, the flow of love in the universe and the energy of Radharani. This is the service we want to do. A small step towards collective Manjari Bhav, let's say. So it's in the, in the spirit of the Manjari that we try to read Bhagavad Gita not through intellectual eyes, but through the eyes of our heart, through loving eyes. We try to see the beauty of the text, we try to see the poetry in the in the notions, and we try to find our own hearts in the expression that's the universal expression that's that's there. This was the mission that Gurudev gave us some time ago now, actually 17 weeks ago, counting today, to read Bhagavad Gita in as an introduction to Bhakti. And I think it's been a very, very uh, rich and, and beautiful project. It's really gone very far and and I've been astonished as just as Gurudev says, he's surprised. I'm very surprised at what we find in the text. Last time, we read verses 20 to 25. And we spoke about the Trivedi, those highly qualified scholars, Vaishnavas, who, Acharyas, who, who know and uh, follow the, the three Vedas the Samaya Jurandrik. And they do it, but they do it according to Prabhupada, we read, not in a loving way, not in a devotional way, but in an instrumental way. They used it to get somewhere. They used it to raise themselves in society and to raise themselves in their, in their spiritual identities, but not as much as they might have if they had done it in a devotional way. According to Prabhupada, most all of the Vaishnavas and the Acharyas that there are, are practicing bhakti in this way, by carrying out Vedic rituals. But what Prabhupada pointed out to us, and really again and again, was that the ultimate point of Vedic rituals must be to surpass them through loving devotion of Radha Mohan, to find, to find the energy of love inside the very rituals and lift ourselves beyond them, so that they're not just mechanical, cold recipes for how to act, but rather they're paths towards our inner heart and our inner soul. So the problem with the, the way that these acharyas are reading the Vedas is that it's fruitive, to use the word that we always find in, in Bhagavad Gita, fruitive, so uh, instrumental, it has a goal, it has a finite material goal, if only uh, to raise in society or to raise even in a transcendental way, it has a finite goal, it's not endless, as bhakti would be considered. It's goal-oriented. And what it might better be pursuing is love itself, and love is infinite. So the true pursuit should be loving relation, which is not finite, but infinite. Then in verse 22, very nicely, Krishna talks about bhakti. And we went, we, he confirmed, uh, Prabhupada confirmed that through bhakti we can find this uh, transcendental reality. We can find a beauty which is divinely pleasurable and not materially pleasurable. pleasurable. So through dev devotional service, time disappears and material blockages disappear, and we can find our way to uh, the divine loving relation. And in this sense, then we under underlined the idea that Krishna is the goal of any offerings, of any sacrifice. So when 
the Bhagavad Gita talks about sacrificing to Indra and demigods, other demigods, Prabhupada points out that, that even those demigod sacrifices have as their final goal Radha Mohan. That when we focus our devotion on even finite, finite uh, sacrificial rituals, but we do it in a devotional way, then the value of that ritual will surpass the material and, and become, become divine. And then finally, last time, we talked about this notion of Krishna as the enjoyer, as the final enjoyer. And I tried to describe this in terms of love and suggest that the Krishna, Radha Mohan, is the beginning and end of all love. And any love we feel in our lives is coming from elsewhere coming from Krishna and leading to Krishna. So we are all vehicle, vehicles of, of that divine love. It's passing through us in the best of circumstances. It flows through us effortlessly. But when we say that Krishna is the ultimate enjoyer, that means he is the ultimate receiver of, of that love, the ultimate receiver of that love. And when we read the Bhagavad Gita in this way, then we immediately see the presence of Radharani because of the course, the loving energy that flows to Krishna flows from Radharani and the purpose of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, appearance was exactly to have that loving experience, to feel, to feel that uh, love and to feel what it is to love uh, back. So if we read love in this way, if we understand love in this way, and we understand this enjoyment of Krishna in this way, then it becomes really quite um, inevitable that, that, Radha, that Radharani appears and the function of Radha, Radharani becomes very, very, very clear to us. And that was where we left it last time. We left off on, on verse 25. So today we'll, we'll look at um, verse 26, which is right there. I want to read it to you in the Sanskrit. I'm not very good at reading Sanskrit, but uh, it's so, so, so very nice, this verse, that we'll give it uh, a go. Patram puspam falam doyam yome bhaktiya prayat chati padaham bhaktiya opartam ashnami prayatam prayatataman prayatatmana. And the translation that Prabhupada gives us is if one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit, a water, hmm. I will accept it. Not completely English, that, but uh, that's what it's translated as. If one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit, a water, I will accept it. So we see it's talking only about one leaf, the simplest, most minute, valueless in material terms. It's hard to imagine something with less value than a, a leaf in material terms. But of course, as you know, it's not the gift that matters. It's the mood in which the gift is given. So the focus of this verse must be on the love and devotion and not on the leaf, flower, fruit, or water, etc. It takes so little to please Krishna, almost nothing, if that pleasure is given with love, with devotional love. It does not matter what things we sacrifice, but what matters is the way that we sacrifice. But there might be, I wanted to read the Sanskrit also because of this beautiful word right at the end, prayatatmana. Prayatatmana. You can hear inside this word 
Atma. Prayatatmana. Prayatva means purity. Atma means the self as, as soul. And actually, there's a wordplay and there's a pun in it already because prayatna, I found, means to apply oneself. So it's all there in that one word that we apply ourselves pu with pure uh, souls, pure consciousness. And this doesn't come through quite so strongly in, in Prabhupada's translation, but the, it's very important because we, when we do this devotion, when we carry out our devoting, devoting sacrifice, it must be done with pure heart, with a pure soul. And it's that purity which becomes very important also in the, in the way that Prabhupada comments on, on this verse. So we can give any gift, a leaf, a flower, a fruit, water, if it's given with a pure heart, if it's given with a pure soul. The question then becomes, how do we obtain that pure heart? What do we need to do to purify our, our soul? So then Prabhupada comments, here Lord Krishna, having established that he is the only enjoyer, the primeval Lord, and the real object of all sacrificial offerings, reveals what types of sacrifices he desires to be offered. But as we'll see, it's not what the sacrifice is that's important. What's really beautiful in just this one sentence from Prabhupada is that it shows this circularity of the flow of love. Like we said before, Krishna is the only enjoyer. So he is the beneficiary of all love. All love in the universe ultimate, ultimately flows to Krishna. When you love your husband, when you love your wife, when you love your children, when you love your lover, this, this love is in passing. It's passing through your lover, passing on, and its ultimate destiny is love for Krishna. So loving anyone in your life is loving God. The more you show love for the people in your life, the more you are showing love for God, for Krishna. So he's the prime, he's the enjoyer, he's the end point of all love in the world. And he's primeval which means he's the first. He's the start of all love, too. So any love that you think you had in your heart to apply to your children, to your friends, to your husband, it's also not yours. It's also coming from Krishna, from Radha Mohan. All love starts there, all love ends there. And this is precisely the meaning of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. And it's the place, Chahat Mahatma, Hapabhu is the loving relation, pure loving relation, the start and the finish of all love. And this is what has to be present. This is what has to be realized, not present, but realized in sacrificial uh, actions that Prabhupada says. So as, as Radha Mohan, Radha Mohan is both the enjoyer and the enjoyed, as we know, both the lover and the beloved the receiver of all love, the giver of all love. Even if it flows through us, uh, earthly beings, it started there and it will end there. It's the flow of love that counts. And even Radha Mohan can be, can be defined to be understood not as two separate individuals, but as the, the relation of love itself. I said last week, all roads lead to Rome, and all love leads to Radha Mohan, the loving relation in its purest form. And I also wanted to read the verse for you because you notice that the word bhakti already appears in it twice. Just a short verse, and the word bhakti is there twice. In the first line, in the first time where it says, um, where it says bhaktiya prayatchati, it's used. Uh, as a verb, talking about devotion, and the second time it's about the devotee. So the work of devotion and the identity of the devotee. 
the key to the verse, I said it already, is the purity of the of the devotee. This means the purity of the devotee's hearts, the purity of the emotions, the sincerity of the heart. And purity in this in this sense means egolessness, not attaching to anything, not attaching to what we're giving. So the moment I think that the sacrifice I'm making to Krishna is wonderful and I did such a great job by sacrificing it, then I'm already attaching myself to it with my ego and its value goes down and my heart becomes impure. So there can be no reason for loving, no reason for giving, no, no, no fruit, no goal in, um, in doing our devotional uh, activities. How do we know what the pure spirit's form looks like? What does pure love look like? Well, we have the great blessing to be able to read the Viraj Leelas, to see it in our dear Gurudev, and to know what form it takes. The Viraj Leelas, Vilapakus Manjari and Radha Rasa Zudaniti, these are, these are stories about what divine love looks like. And this is how we can understand the way that love works in our hearts, in our souls. Each of the verses in Vilapakus Manjari, for example, is, is a little story about what love looks like if we opened our hearts and could peer inside to see the mechanisms. Each verse is a, is a, is a picture of the different aspects of our own divine loving potential. This is why it's so important and so inspiring to read them. It shows us what we could be doing with our hearts, the kind of love we could be living. So reading these is very important, uh, staying close to our dear Guru and to other devotees and association is the way that we can learn about what that pure love can be and we can emulate it, we can copy it and try to try to live up to it. So Prabhupada continues, if one wishes to engage in devotional service to the Supreme in order to be purified and to reach the goal of life, the transcendental loving service of God, then he or she should find out what the Lord desires of him. First, this comment, this sentence tells us what the goal of life is, loving service loving service in the spiritual way, doing seva in a loving way on the spiritual plane, which is precisely, of course, what Manjari Bhav is all about. The, the Manjari identity is exactly that one, service in a perfect, transcendental, loving way. So here again, we have Prabhupada telling us in, in a way that Manjari Bhav is our goal something that Gurudev often says to us as well. But Prabhupada says we have to find out what the Lord wants of us. And what the Lord doesn't want of us is things. Like I said before, the Lord, Krishna doesn't care. He doesn't care what you give. He cares about the love with which we give it, the loving devotion we give to our activities in life the loving devotion with which we treat other, other human beings. Strangely then, there follows in Prabhupada a discussion, a short discussion about the things that should be offered and should not be offered. And I found this a little bit confusing because in, on the one hand, Prabhupada says it doesn't matter because it's about the love and the spirit in which it's given. And then he talks about the different kinds of things that should and shouldn't be given. So we continue, let's see. Thus, meat, fish, eggs should not be offered to Krishna. If he desired such things as offerings, he would have said so. <laughs> Instead, he clearly requests that a leaf, fruit, flowers, and water be given to him. 
And he says of this offering, says Prabhupada, I will accept it. Therefore, we should understand that he will not accept meat, fish, and eggs. Vegetables, grains, fruits, milk, and water are the proper foods for human beings and are prescribed by Lord Krishna himself. We also, whatever else we eat cannot be offered to him since he will not accept it. Thus we cannot, sorry, there was one more line there. Thus we cannot be acting on the level of loving devotion if we offer such foods. So there has to be some awareness about what we're giving. I can only think that this is what Prabhupada is meaning, to remind us that it's important to be aware of what we're giving as a way of being loving in the giving. So if we love God, if we want to give devotional service to Krishna, then we should, should be attentive to what we're giving to him. Then the next line goes on to talk about eating prasad, eating food, and and the way that we offer things, and the way that we eat them, or the way that we eat foodstuffs that we've offered. He says in the third chapter, down here, in the third chapter, verse 13, Sri Krishna explains that only the remains of sacrifice are purified and fit for consumption by those who are seeking advancement in life and release from the clutches of material entanglement. In other words, in other words, the only things that we should be eating are the ones, are the remnants of, of what's been eaten by, by Prabhu, by, um, sorry, by Krishna. And this is why we offer our prasad to Radha Mohan every day before we take it ourselves in our daily lives, in our daily activity. We sacrifice it, but it's purified, purified because once we offer it to Radha Mohan, it becomes the remnants of the prasad of of, of God, of Radha Mohan. It's difficult to imagine something more <clears throat> intimate than sharing the food of Radha Mohan. Because the remnants of that food are the food saturated with the spiritual energy and the meaning and the force that Radha Mohan possess. So the food is there the food is there, and then the spiritual excess, which is given back by, by the other one. Prabhupada goes on, he says, those who do not make an offering of their food, he says in the same verse, are said to be eating only sin. What does this mean, I wonder? What does it mean to be eating sin? Well, they're eating sin because they're not receiving the divine devotional energy that comes back to us when, when the when the prasad has been already been digested by Radha Mohan and given back to us as remnants. When it's given back to us, it becomes divine. There's that divine devotional energy in it. So eating sin, which sounds terrible, eating sin means eating something that has no soul. It has no spiritual, no spiritual substance. It is has nothing of the divine in it. It means eating something that's only material, something that has no spiritual energy, no no soul. So by first offering um, our prasad to Radhamohan, we offer our soul. And in return, we receive a bit of the divine soul condensed into our food. Only when we put our soul in the food and offer it, does it come back to us with soul, with spirit. Sorry, I heard someone, did somebody want to share?
Um, so Prabhupada continues. Uh, in other words, here, in other words, their every mouthful, the, the mouthful that is of those who are eating sin, their very mouthful is simply deepening their involvement in the complexities of material nature. This means if we're, if we're consuming our food, Without understanding, without seeing it and understanding it as the remnants of Radha Mohan, as completely without any spiritual life, without any soul, without any love in it, then we just go deeper and deeper into our material nature. In order to rise from our material nature, we need to consume, consume spirit, consume soul, consume the divine, and that we do when we consume food that's been blessed. So offering the food to Radha Mohan is not just offering, giving it away. We give it, give it away and then we get it back. It stands, it's, comes in the same kind of circle as the loving relationship comes. We give it with our soul, it comes back with the soul of Radha Mohan. Then Prabhupada goes on here, by preparing nice, simple vegetable dishes, offering them before the picture of a deity of Lord Krishna, and bowing down and praying for him to accept such a humble offering. It enables us, enables one to advance steadily in life, to purify the body, and to create fine brain tissues, which will lead to clear thinking. So it purifies the body and, and fixes the brain, but much, much more importantly, it purifies the soul because, we, because we're always giving of our inner spiritual self to the food. When we make the food with spiritual presence, we, we, we offer the food with spiritual earnestness, then it comes back to us with the spirit of Radha Mohan and we become pure and stronger and more uh, more deeply more deeply involved Prabhupada says above all the offering should be made with the attitude of love Krishna has no need of food he says since he already possesses everything that be yet he will accept the offering of one who desires to please him in that way Obviously, Krishna doesn't. Obviously, Krishna doesn't need food. Krishna doesn't need anything. Krishna doesn't even need love, because Krishna is already all love. But Krishna wants our devotion, wants us to open our hearts, so that love will flow throughout the world. Offering our food is the one way of acting out that devotion. Why does, why does Krishna want devotion? Is it because he has a big ego and he, he wants lots of attention from the jivas? Of course not. He wants devotion because through devotion, love's flow, love flows in the world. It flows from us to others, to mothers, to fathers, to children, to lovers, to uncles, to aunties. And when we have loving devotion to God, we have loving devotion to each other. Loving God is loving each other. Krishna wants devotion to him because he wants devotion to be flowing in the universe. He wants devotion because he wants us to love each other. Krishna is the universe and he wants it, he wants the love to flow there. And this is reinforced by what 
Prabhupada says next, the, he says, the most important element, sorry, the important element in preparation, in serving and in offering, is to act with love. For Krishna. We act with love for Krishna. So everyone can cook something. Even the worst of us can boil water. But not everyone could can love while cooking, put love into their cooking, find joy in preparing food for those they love. And understand that food, when it's properly prepared and offered, is no longer material food, but is prem prasad. It's spiritual food. All prasad becomes prem prasad. Just look at the guru, the way Gurudev, in, in his endless love for us, feeds us when we are in Mungarbandi. It's overwhelming. Then Prabhupada goes back a moment to the imperialist philosophers in the end of the commentary here. <clears throat> the imperialist, impersonalist, sorry, not imperialist, impersonalist, the impersonalist philosophers who wish to maintain absolute truth is without, sorry, who wish to maintain that absolute truth is without senses cannot comprehend this verse of Bhagavad Gita. This is a really very interesting idea. The impersonalist philosophers, I repeat, who wish to maintain the, that absolute truth is without senses, cannot comprehend this verse of Bhagavad Gita. Senses. In order to have senses, material senses or even spiritual senses, there must be personhood. There must be a relation to what is sensed, to what is seen or felt or heard or smelled. So people who don't understand that Krishna has senses don't understand this verse. People who don't understand that what is being sensed is love, they can't understand this verse. So love is never impersonal. Sensing love is not impersonal. Love cannot be impersonal. And this is what impersonalists don't understand, according to Prabhupada. And he goes on and saying, to them, the impersonalist, that is, it is either a metaphor or proof of the mundane character of Krishna. So this idea that Krishna has senses, it's either just a metaphor, a symbol, or means something else, or it's actually proof that Krishna is not God. That, that Krishna is just mundane, he has senses like you and me, material senses. But in actuality, Krishna, the Supreme Godhead, has senses, Prabhupada says. And it's stated that his senses are interchangeable. In other words, one sense can perform the function of any, not any other. We understand here we're talking about we're talking about senses like smell, touch, vision, uh, uh, and others, but in a transcendental, divine sense of the word. Krishna has senses means Krishna feels. He feels things. And this is another kind of indirect proof that we're talking about Radha Mohan. Radha Mohan is the ultimate feeler and felt. Radha and Mohan feel each other, 
feel each other's love and are felt by the other. So they are the ultimate sense, sensual beings. Let's put it that way. Let's use that word, sensual. Radha and Mohan have senses. That is what makes their love meaningful. That's what makes all the Vraj Leelas meaningful, that they feel. And they feel many, many different things. Again, this is what we learn by reading about, reading the Vraj Leelas, that we see all the different aspects of the love of Radha Mohan. That we see the broad, broad abilities for sensing that Radha Mohan have. And this is what personalism means. All these senses then, they lead back to Radharani's loving energy. All senses, all sensations come from love or lead back to love. A sweet flower leads our hearts to love. A lovely smelling pizza leads our hearts to, to love. The sight of a sunset carries us to love. The touch of a soft of a cat, the tail of a cat, makes us feel love. All the senses lead back to love. All of them. And that's why we can say that the foundational sense, the first premium sense, is the energy of Radha, Radharani. All senses are in some way hers. All smells lead back to the nose of Radharani. All beautiful visions lead back to her eyes. And all beautiful touches lead, lead back to her um, fingertips. And there's one more quick line from Prabhupada says, this is what it means to say that Krishna is absolute. And what does that mean? Why does that say that Krishna is absolute? He's absolute because Krishna's senses, they cover all feelings. All feelings, all emotions, all sensations that possibly can be thought exist in the world can be felt by Krishna's senses. Krishna feels everything. Krishna has the perfect senses. When we say Krishna is absolute, that means many things. But what we're focusing on here is that it means that he feels everything. And since without Radharani, nothing can be felt emotionally, it's again the presence, it's Radha Mohan we're referring to. Radha Mohan feels everything. We've often said about the Vedic Krishna, the old-fashioned Vishnu Krishna, that he knows everything, he can do anything, but he feels nothing. Radha Mohan is a different Krishna. Radha Mohan feels everything. And in fact, that's his, her greatest power. The reason for the appearance of Lord Chaitanya is to feel. The reason for the appearance of Lord Chaitanya is to feel. Mahaprabhu is not there to deliver a message like Moses or, or Jesus or Muhammad, not there to build a church, to, 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 to carry out some task. He's there to feel. That's why, that's why he made his appearance, Mahaprabhu, to feel, and by feeling, to show us how to feel. If there's an emotion in your heart, it was somehow learned from Mahaprabhu, feeling the love that passes between Radha and Mohan. So what Prabhupada says only makes sense if it refers to Radha Mohan. Radha Mohan has all the senses, all the feelings, feels everything. It's like an infinite catalog of 
sensations that we read in in the Radha Rasa Sudaniti. So many fine details about the different kinds of sensations we can have in love. Radha Mohan feels everything. And all these feelings are made possible by the energy of love that Radha Rani brings and that we uh, are at the service of in our Manjarik identities. So loving energy is the, the very building block of all energy. This is something that Jayananda explained to me very nicely a couple of weeks ago. I'm very grateful for that understanding. That all energy in the world ultimately leads back to loving energy, to prema. And the sense of love, the feeling of love, being able to feel love is the grandfather of all feelings. If we feel anything, the little taste of chocolate on your tongue, this is made possible by the loving senses of Radha Mohan. The sense of love in Radha Mohan is the building block of all senses everywhere. All senses are related to the sense of love and to the sense of love that appears in Radha Mohan and that we read about in the Vrajvidas. So check yourself, as Gurudev says, check yourself. Any emotion you feel, happiness, sadness, surprise, fear, joy, desire, <laughs> they're all linked to, to love. Love you want to have, love you want to give, love you're receiving, love that you're missing, love that's flowing. And that love begins and ends with Radha Mohan. So any emotion is there by the grace of Radha Mohan. And really, I'll say something very strong and maybe foolish, but in Bhakti, 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 Bhakti Yoga, this is all we need to realize. Realization is exactly that. It's the realization of, of that, that all emotions we feel come, come from Radha Mohan, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of who we are is love. And to realize this, we've, we've realized everything. <laughs> This is really confirmed. There's in one last line here. There it is. Prabhupada says just one short sentence, which says so much. He says, lacking senses, he, meaning Krishna, could hardly be considered full in all opulences. Lacking senses, he could hardly be considered full in all opulences. So if Krishna didn't have these senses, if Krishna didn't have the perfect spiritual sense apparatus, perfect capacity to feel all things as Radha Mohan, then his beauty, his greatness would be meaningless. He could be hardly considered full in all opulences. So it's the very ability to sense which makes the greatness, excuse me, the greatness of Krishna possible and meaningful. Or let's put it a different way, little in the, in the if we think of God as Brahman, if we think about what reality is, if Krishna had no senses, there would be no <clears throat> beauty in the world. Because if Krishna had no senses, we would have no senses. We would see nothing, feel nothing, hear, smell nothing. The opulence of Krishna, the greatness, the glory of Krishna comes from the fact that the Radha Mohan can feel anything, can feel opulence. The greatness of Krishna comes from the fact that there's loving exchange happening in, in the Radha Mohan. The beauty of the world, the world itself, the universe, comes from the fact that the Radha Mohan can see beauty. She, she, he sees beauty and enjoys it. 
there would be no beauty in the world without Mahaprabhu. There would be beautiful things. The world would be filled of, with objects, material objects that you might say have nice form, pretty colors, nice sounds, nice fragrance. But we wouldn't see them with love because, because Radha Mohan wouldn't be there as the model for this sensing. So all these things, at least the senses of Krishna, the experiences of Krishna, the, love, the experience of the loving pastime in Rad, with all its aesthetic beauty, its sensuality that we read about every day, it's only possible in the form of Radha Mohan. The meaning of Gaudiya Vaishnavism comes not from the fact that Krishna created the world, but that Radha Mohan feels the world. That's what it's about. Let's see, Prabhupada goes on. And I lost my place, excuse me. In the seventh chapter, Krishna has explained that he impregnates the living entities into the material nature. This is done by looking upon the material nature. That's right here. In the seventh chapter, Krishna has explained that he impregnates the living entities into material nature, and he does this by looking upon material nature. In other words, by looking upon material nature, by looking, casting his eyes onto the material world, he gives it spiritual energy. The gaze of Krishna, the eyes of Krishna, the look of Krishna, inserts love, impregnates the material world with love. In other words, to cause um, the appearance of living entities means causing material nature to become spiritual. So he looks upon the material world he's created. We can even imagine individual living beings with no souls yet. He looks upon it and through his eyes causes material nature to become spiritual. Just as Krishna looks upon the nature, he gives it a loving spirit, a loving uh, spirit. Just like when he tastes material food, he gives it a loving spirit. And then he's, Prabhupada's finishing this commentary. And so, and so in this instant, Krishna is hearing the devotees' words of love in offering food such stuffs is wholly identical with his eating and actually tasting. Krishna is hearing the devotees' words of love in offering food stuffs is the same as Krishna eating and actually tasting. In other words, the loving words of the devotee offering food under the loving glance of Krishna cause Krishna to, to impregnate the food with spiritual energy. The soul energy that's, that we possess is part and parcel of, of Krishna's. And so when we pass it along to those we feed, we're passing along the love of Radha Mohan. 
And then finally, let's see, this point says Prabhupada should be emphasized because of his absolute position. His hearing is wholly identical with his eating and tasting. Only the devotee who accepts Krishna as he describes himself without interpretation can understand that the supreme absolute truth can eat food and enjoy it. Only one who accepts Krishna as he is, and this is the origin of the title that Prabhupada gives his book, only accepts him just as he is, without any embellishment, can understand this process by which food is made sacred. That Krishna can eat and food, touch and eat food and enjoy it without uh, even touching it. Well, now I've carried on. Oh, there's even a hand up there. Let's see. Yeah. So I, I have a simple question, but um, so if Krishna. Your mic went mute, <laughs> mute before the question came. Because in a sense, there's this Pakta Bhaktiam. So wh whoever is fully purified, he, he can offer. And after this process, everything one does and hears and sees and smells, whatever, it, it's uh, somewhere in the next verse, I think it's, it's not Krishna, but for the pleasure, or it should be for the pleasure of Narayan. But is this really like directly connected? Which things? Which things directly connected? Like that the the, the bhakta that does the things, is, is it really in direct connection for the pleasure of the supreme? Um, he, in, in, in a way that Krishna is looking at the material in, in first place, but then he's looking at us and we're looking at him and he is like like seeing what we see or in, in this way, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to give a little answer, and then I'm going to ask Jainanda Maharaj to to answer. First of all, that one of the things you said was that um, the the bhakta, bhakta needs to be purified to do this. This is not true. This is um, anyone can do this, but there has to be love in the heart, and there has to be love given in in the offering. That's the that's the condition. And then for the rest. Krishna, when you give, when you offer your food with love, Krishna accepts this love. He's the enjoyer of this love, this tiny little bit of love, which is already part and parcel of, of his love. So it is true there is a relation there, that as far as I understand this, there's a relation there between the love you give and the enjoyment of Krishna. And I hope that answers. Jainanda Maharaj, do you want to address the matter? No, you're muted still, dear. Still muted. Is it? Uh, um, uh, I feel this very simple way what Krishna is telling here is this very simple way how soul can be connected to the super soul and in a very essential way because uh, good stuff or any living being here it's very essential it's very natural and the, this this way how can uh, any soul surrender to Krishna and say and, 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 and also at not all because when I read, hearing and reading each one offers me peace, love, and devotion, it reminds me how she might radica cook for Krishna. Because with love, love, she might radica is right or love. And she's cooking. And Sadaka then comes to his kitchen 
in Sadaka Bali. He is meditating, but he is cooking as Shiva or Shimati Radhika, as her more two hands. She has two hands more in the, in his soul. Uh, <laughs> like this, Krishna is accepting. I think we can uh, find here two levels of, of connection with Sutra Soul and this Ishtadeva. I can start here. Yes, I agree. Hmm. So I could not, uh, I could not uh, uh, they figure out the questions that uh, this this bus I feel Krishna does not want to no does not need anything. Krishna need loving feeling devotion means Krishna only needs Radhika. Mm. So this loving energy loving feeling comes from Radhika. So he wants to taste this love come from Radhika. So therefore, sometimes we may think, oh, I'm not pure. You know, I'm not very, maybe ego. But just forget about it. Just to, I want to please. I want to offer uh, sincerity, then Krishna will accept. Because this this sincerity, humbleness is a like kind of a symptom of love. Mm. Guru mentions love is very humble and uh, what is that? Kind of a, Dedication also. Yeah. Like Manjari has Manjari is lowest to pass. <laughs> Honest. We think Manjari is very highest. But actually today Chaitanya Prema Pabu told me. Go people to Padakamara yo. Dasha. Dasha Dasha Midas. So who is the most dear person is Radhika. And who is the servant of Radhika? Or who is appreciating Radhika? That is Gopi. Then who is the servant? Who is the, who is the servant? Or who is the, who wants to serve? This is Manjari. So Manjari actually lowest person. But the lowest person has most love. Mm. So this bus and also Uttabaji is is saying we have to realize. So we may think, oh, we don't know, you know, I have no realization. And after hearing Uttabaji's uh, explanation, realization is feeling this loving energy in everything, every creation, every person. And if, because Radharani is acting everywhere, but uh, if we are senseless, <laughs> impersonal, we could not perceive it. Or some person who has love, but sometimes we are our, if we are blockage, so much ego, we could not appreciate as a, as a loving thing. So, but if free from blockage, we feel, oh, that person has so much love, oh, that person has so much good quality, actually I'm lowest person, then we can, we can, let say, feel this, Uttamaji say realization, we have to realize, I feel realization is we accept the humble position and try to feel all loving energy of Radharani in every creation or everything. That's <laughs> I felt. Mm. 
But of course, please, oh, everyone. Uh, the question uh, is arising when we are reading this. Uh, is it possible for someone who is living first time to offer to Krishna something? Or he is just initiated by Guru through some rituals? And um, actually, I was one bit once was witness of these discussions. And what I understood in my own experience in, in these discussions, if a pure hearted person means with open heart religious, he's accepting this flow of even social part in commentary. Means he's in this moment his disciple. He receives this flow of feelings and accept him. What, what, what is the flow? It's flow coming from Patriarca. It's Christmas day. He who offers me his love and devotion. And this stream of love or devotion comes from Shri Prabhupada to someone who is reading this day, his open heart. And, and then he received this and started to offer Krishna with this feeling. Krishna will accept. It's true work. And then and I remember when we discussed this with Shilan Rana Maharaj, he first rejected this. He told no, he must be insulted. But the workers was not happy and told we was witness many times how it works. And then he accepted, yes, it's true. <laughs> ah, beautiful. Oh, nice. and so I want to share one thing. I I I I realized with the conversation with the Chaitanya Paramahamsa. So Chaitanya Paramahamsa one one day. If we have Radha Radha Rani in, in my heart, in our heart, then all our behavior should be like Radhara. Mm. Be humble, be kindness, be merciful, be generous, you know, everything expert. But the problem is uh, we are thinking we are Krishna conscious. Oh, I'm Radhara. <laughs> but actually we are thinking another thing, means we are in the heart we put another thing. So then after, you know, we discuss, oh, actually true. So how 24-7 is possible? It's actually not so difficult. It is not so easy, but if in a heart, if we keep Radharani. And then it is easy. But our problem is we have to always check it out. Hmm. So do, do, do we chanting with love or do, do we acting with love? Do we acting care and loving? <laughs> Or we are acting in in the mood of ego. This offering also same thing. Huh. We are offering. We want to eat. Sometimes we you know okay. I I want to eat this one. Therefore I buy. Then I offer. Sometimes we have that kind of thing that say oh I like this one. Okay I I I buy I offer. It. But actually, Krishna want what we want. <laughs> so this is very very interesting point. So so therefore, Guru Dev said, we check check it ourselves. We are acting with Ram. We are acting with <laughs> We are offering with Ram. We want to please him. We are, we are offering what, what he likes. We are offering what Guru Dev likes. Or we are offering what I like. Hmm. <laughs> so this is, you know, the, our devoted association. We are, we are learning. I'm learning at least. So nice. So nice. Thank you.
So, Echatani Taipa will want to share. Actually, thank you for giving the chance. Actually, what I want to do is a free question. Uh, so, you have to uh, maybe talk a little bit about this important point. You're listening about the, the topic about the, the offering, an important, very important point. I just uh, have some experience of some uh, devotee offering uh, offering prasadam in one restaurant, um, in one program in Europe. And actually, the, the, the devotee, he was the chef, you know, he came very angry, actually, uh, complaining for everybody, why you are so late, why you are so late? And so all the people who came to take Prashad and was a little like scared. I was in shock, like, wow, you know? So I said, like, well, this is not good because there is this energy of anger. It's like, you know, what I'm going to eat now is just Prashad is for me, it's like, should be with love and passion, but like, you know, I can see this, this, uh, this situation of uh, somebody who is, is, is doing the service of cooking for the others, is angry. So I was a little sad about that. Um, but so what important is to when we eat, when we, when we offer, when we buy the food, what are the consciousness of we, we do that? No, are we doing for ourselves? Are we doing with that? We are being paid, we're getting some money. What are we doing for really? We want to serve Radha Krishna. Um, this is one thing that I want to share listening about you, about you, you know, the comments so beautiful. Um, uh, but also it's a point that like, always ask myself. Um, yes, I know, like, uh, we have to offer to, to Radha Krishna and uh, with love and devotion, and everything should be done in this spirit. But there are moments when I, I really want to eat something, you know? <laughs> like, for example, if I, I see like a really very beautiful and delicious mango, I say, Wow, you know, it's really tasty. I just want to enjoy this mango, it's delicious. Yeah. So, in that moment, I'm thinking that I really I like the mango. But I have to offer to Krishna, rather Krishna, this mango. So sometimes I get a little like uh, in controversy with myself because the, the first desire was that I, is, is, I can see the mango as a dish. I want to take a mango. I want to eat thirsty for mango. So I will share some uh, comments about this uh, because it happened for me and I'm sure it happened for all. For all. Like sometimes we want to eat something and what, how we can harmonize. The, 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 the desire that sometimes we want to uh, enjoy the sense by the same the same way at the same time that it, it goes with the with, with the with the mood it should be properly that everything should be from the place of love uh, and from the spirit of offering thank you very much mm -hmm. mm. so nice thank you so much And of course, it's not just the mango as an object. It's uh, the mango as something beautiful. It's the soul in the mango too. I mean, different different kind of soul, but nonetheless, a much lower level of soul. But that the fact that the mango gives nourishment, the, it has energy in it. It has a certain kind of energy in it, a certain kind of beauty and the flavor it, it gives. These are all... These are all expressions of divinity in the mango, and these are what we offer, not just the mango like it was a, a dead, immaterial thing, inanimate thing. I'm sorry, but the, but it's the it's the beauty and the divine in the mango that we're that we're giving up. That's where the value of it is. Rade, Rade. Hey. Welcome. When I listen, all of you, I get inspired also to say something. It's uh, when you read this, I <clears throat> try to understand what is uh, Krishna telling to us. It's a uh, instruction. No? This verse and. Um, so it's, I think it's a very simple thing, what he is teaching here. It's not complicated. 
um, what is this ingredients, for example, no, it's, it's uh, all giving by the nature. In all countries in the world, we can find some water and the leaf, a flower and so on. So that means we no need some complicated or unnatural things. We can use everything what is around us, so it's easy to get it. And they say, if you like to please me, uh, take something from the nature. Exactly, he said what what you also said that it has to be some not not by uh, not violate and uh, uh, put your love side and offer it to me so that this everybody can do it mm -hmm. everywhere no rules and regulations it's it's very simple way what he say mm -hmm. you can do it everywhere every time you don't need some preparation or rituals even no nothing you don't need an institution you need nothing only use something I already gave to you in your garden or mm. in your country where you are. You can pick it and give it with love. That means think on me yeah. with loving, with a loving affection. So that is to create a relationship between you and me. And I give already everything. Love you got from my Radhika. It's in your heart. You can share. And you can use something what I already gave to you. So there's no need a big uh, ritual, no regulation, no, not complicate. It is natural, what Gurudev always said. Na? So we go in a natural way with Krishna. Mm -hmm. And this means a loving relationship. Everybody can do to every time everywhere all country so and it is it is some so sweet when he is teaching us like this and so easy for everybody every simple soul every simple mind can do this no need for a big education it's only a question of uh, a little time, spend a little time for this and give me some little things, easy, share with me. Mm. I like very much. It's, uh, we can come so close by easy way to our Krishna. And in our case, we also learn more, but uh, this teaching from Krishna is a direct, in a direct contact to him, to offer him mm. some water. <laughs> Thank you. Rade, Rade. So nice. Such a very important observation. Yeah. Radhe Radhe Jai Ho. So, I was inspired by our Twitter. He offered some question um, and helped me also from Radhe Chan. Some inspiration. 
So Guru Dev Shivas from Bhagavad Gita, 10-10, purport of Shri Prabhupada, that first we have to assign with Krishna, then slowly, step by step, we are reaching final goal, which is service to Radharani. So in this verse, Krishna is saying, if you offer to me with devotion, I will accept. So if we decide to offer him, then we already assigned with him. Yeah? That he's like our goal. So that means we are already exchanging with Radharani our love. Mm. Our hearts open, and this love and devotion goes toward, already towards final goal. So in this verse, if he accept, okay, I will offer you, but this means I already accepted you, which is like a consequence I'm exchanging with the other hand. Is it true? Yeah. Very, very, very well put, I, I think. Very, very nice. Beautiful. Uh -huh. Very beautiful. I think in our case, in our case, we have to understand what is Radhadasyam actually. And uh, as, as Manjari, this verse is not for us. We will not offer directly to Krishna that I cannot see. Maybe you can ask Gurudev, he has other idea, but I cannot see that we go in this direct contact. <laughs> we are Radha Dasis, so we have no interest in, in Krishna, why to offer him this. It's a loving exchange for his devotees, but in our case, I feel that Radhika is our goal, yep. and we only fix our mind on her. This is maybe for, for one who has some desire, because our service is 100% to Radharani and not to Krishna. And maybe some who has some desire will offer Krishna <laughs> something also to get something. But our service is, is fixed on her. So maybe this verse is not especially made for uh, Manjaris. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. Guru also beautiful. So this is Manjari. Borasunda is correct. <laughs> So, Gorasunda only see Radhika. Other, you know, nothing else. Yes, Gorasunda, it's this verse that's Krishna is telling. He telling. If one offers me this love, if someone coming is Shrimati Radhika, so then he is accepting. Just Shrimati Radhika. Manjari is a shadow. If love is considered Radhika, so if we offer Radhika means with love. So Manjari want to offer this love. So if exam with Radhika, then Krishna could accept. But without Radhika, Krishna cannot accept. This is Radha Charampa. <laughs> Thank you. 
I want to add about flowers uh, because it's a cliche instead of flowers. Well, once one my friend told if you're returning from forest uh, traveling in the forest, never return with empty hands, take flowers in order to get coverage. And he told it's very simple, but you can never see Baba friends. And I started to do this and I found gradually I found my when I walk in forest, my eyes started looking flowers. This, I want these flowers, it will be very nice from Chimatradika side. These flowers I will put from Mokan side, like this meditation stuff. <laughs> so, so interesting. Before I was indifferent towards flowers, but from that point I started collecting it. It's really mm. stuff to grow. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Actually, who is who is offering to Krishna? These are those who like to get something from him. There is only Radhika who is uh, serving without any. She is only in the meditation how to serve him perfectly, to make him happy. But if we know that uh, this uh, person, this Krishna, he has everything. So what can we offer? We can say, okay, we can offer love. But mainly the people who offer something to Krishna, they do it to get something. Right? There are, there are. They want right. some. Yeah, good. Very nice. Yeah, I agree. Give and take. Give and take. Give and take. Give, I'm giving you, I want something back from you. <laughs> yeah. This is Dorma. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is very true, but it's not what Prabhupada is saying. Where? What? What Prabhupada said? Prabhupada is describing how there is selfless giving. And this is the real kind of giving. It's devotional giving. It's only service. It's not, uh, it's not fruitive. You're talking about fruitive. We giving. have to start giving. We have to give up, start giving. Hmm. First, we are giving to give us selfless. But before signing, we give to Krishna. <coughs> So giving nature is devotional. When we start giving and practice of giving, that moment is devotion start. So start giving, start feeding, start giving sharing of love. Do something for the Vaishnava Seva. Uh -huh. What? Name Ruchi, when the death comes in the name, give it there. Hmm. Then we do the mercy to the Jiva. And who is the first Jiva? Inside sitting me, my soul is the first Jiva. So this soul has to, we have to pray for the mercy for my soul to the sadhus. That please, Mahatma Sadhu, simply mind people, give some mercy to me that my life can change, my feeling. 
blockage can go on. Please give us a good. I'm too blocked. With, and suffering with my broken might, how to remove my blockage, I don't know. Without your help, I cannot take myself. <laughs> when my blockage are clean, I have no what you say. Shekels. Mm. 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 I'm free. Mm. Then I can show to my brothers, sisters, <laughs> friends how you can do in your life. And that service is the real service. This is given that. Hmm. Always you serve given that. Always lack of service. How you can serve to others. How you can love to others. How you can care to others. How to do And you think that I do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to do more, I have to do more. I have to learn more to do, I have to do more. And this Daya is my Swami. When her mercy comes in her life, so. But we don't love some of love yes, can come. No. No, yes. Now you give hope, Gurudev. Now, now we know the way. Oh, if I cannot do mercy to my soul, what I do is like nothing. Ma, my, ma, my dear. Wow. <laughs> Now that's good. My, oh, I'm, no. <laughs> I'm missing you so much. All of you. Not easy to come back in this material world. <laughs> you are still in the Germany. You are still in the <laughs> But I'm a friend of mine. This is the answer. This is one thing. Landing is also difficult in Vrindavan. <laughs> My body land, living, but still I'm flying. Landing is just, and flying is also different from death. Thank you. My problem. But the answer was so nice, Gurudev. So we get, we need the mercy. We need mercy of those who are really in Vrindavan. And when we are yes. in Vrindavan. My Rudam Maharaj is living in France, Paris, but he is in Vrindavan. Die. He's a great great one. Beautiful. He, he had so much love for Krishna. 
<laughs> yes, Prabhupada. That mercy and that kripa will change our life. And this question will be answered by Prabhupada. Right. Because uh, sometimes we translate and sometimes we pass away on the right, but not explain much. That is also one thing. Right. Mm. Right. Right. Yeah. Actually, Prabhupada explained this. We read some days before about his explanation of uh, two platforms, transcendental and material platform. And on the material platform, we can understand that we, the, the living beings are identified with their material bodies. And so they like to get something from Krishna when they are offering something. And if we are in Vrindavan with the transcendental body, with the, in the Sita Deya, we can understand that this is, this offering will happen with love and a devotion. Then the real devotion taking place without self selfish uh, ideas. I I will find out maybe this this part what we read. It's only a few days ago. There is an explanation of Prabhupada Rava. It's very nice that he spoke about two platforms. Hmm. And one is a material and one is a, a spiritual platform. And uh, there was also he spoke about uh, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. There was when he spoke about the Sita Deya, and that was actually this this point we just discussed now. Yeah, thank you. So I got it.